Good afternoon, everybody. All you are welcome to my PhD defense, which is about low flows, mechanisms, forecasts, and climate impact. My pioneer one, Mesfin Mekonen, my colleague from University of Twente, and for years we are working together. And Suleiman, also my colleague, and um, they will assist me during the process. Thank you very much. Low flows may seem controversial for a country which is wet, like Netherlands. But it may happen, especially end of the year uh, or end of the summer, when all the snow is melted, where there is no water storage, then we may see. And I conducted this research with my time boy, Ian Hoekstra. I will start with an introduction to the study area. And as you see, the reader will observe that uh, my thesis is based on three main pillars. Mechanisms, forecasts, and climate impact. After identification of low flow mechanisms, we, we selected appropriate models for medium range, seasonal range, and at the end we used HPV model for climate impact assessment. Why low flows? As I said, it may seem controversial, but it has a special economical impact on the Rhine region because the German goods are carried through the Rhine and if there is low water levels below 1100 cubic, uh, cubic meter per second then the navigation is hampered not, not only navigation but also energy production is limited because if there is less water the water authorities will not let energy centrals to withdraw water then it's a big problem of course, water quality will be also affected, and water supply, uh, which 65% of the Netherlands is dependent on the Rhine. So it's important to improve the forecast lead time. Currently, the forecasts are available up to 3-4 days in right water stat and different water authorities. And climate impacts are inevitable, we see this year, for example, we will face low flows because snow uh, was less in the, in the main uh, alpine part. So we will probably see this year low flows as well. And uncertainty is inevitable because the climate forecast, uh, weather forecast more than six days ahead are not reliable. This is the Rhine, my study area. It starts from Alpine uh, uh, region in Switzerland and comes, the uh, melted water comes down until the lowland Netherlands. So the main uh, precipitation as snow is on the Alpine part and some lakes uh, keep water and uh, some uh, river management uh, facilities also helps to keep water levels high. But there are many industrial and energy production facilities along the Rhine. So what we did, we collected a lot of data. My first year uh, was all busy with research uh, proposal and collecting data. The second year was processing this almost 1,000 1, uh, groundwater data and uh, many snow, uh, snow data, and then put it into uh, a framework. So we selected, we pre-selected precipitation, potential evaporation, groundwater levels, snow, and lake levels as low flow indicator, because these are the main component of a hydrology, hydrological system. The, uh, the rain comes, the snow comes, evaporation goes, uh, groundwater is also part of the system, 
snow and lake. So if we know these five variables, we can know more about the system. And uh, we look at the correlations in this figure with different lead times and temporal resolution. So the, uh, the, the, the color more to the red shows strong correlations and we can identify in which temporal resolution or lag we should use in the model. After identifying these low flow mechanisms, you can select uh, the appropriate model <coughs> for forecasting. We selected from available models these two models, GR4J and HPV. HPV, is, as you see, has three storages. It is more complex and more sophisticated. And we, we developed uh, inverse modeling by using the observed discharge today and to, uh, to calculate first we divided we divided into fast runoff and uh, slow runoff and fast runoff later we updated the storages so we could look at <coughs> different uncertainties we used Monte Carlo approach many many simulations and we derived some uh, empirical equations to to update the storages. In HPV, because of the uh, fast runoff is the main component, it is nonlinear curve. And for uncertainty propagation, this is the entire model. And if you uh, vary input, initial condition, and parameter sets, you see the uh, range or variability in the output. So this is how we assess uh, the uncertainty in the model. Why we assess uncertainty in the model? Because uncertainty means, in other terms, error. If uh, we know the errors coming from, we can reduce or select a better model. For a deterministic forecast, for example, you, you use the best possible inputs, a best calibration set, and the best initial condition. But if you want to make an uncertainty analysis for parameter, you must vary the parameter set and the keep, keep the others as best. At the end, you get this gray scale which is ranging as you see the parameter uncertainty has the biggest impact on forecast only low flow periods are shown as you see between 2003 and 4 uh, starting from august till uh, uh, end of the year is shown because at that time the observed discharge was below Q75 threshold, 1,100 cubic per second. And in this figure, we can easily see where is the uh, weak points of this uh, GR4J model. And HPV has less range because it's sophisticated, more uh, sophisticated, and it is specifically uh, developed for Northern Europe countries, a Swedish model. And with uncertainty apportionment that we followed, you can easily see which part of the uncertainty as a percentage comes from input uncertainty, parameter, initial condition, and the total uncertainty is always more or less the, the, uh, the total, as you see, the red, uh, which is the accumulation of all uncertainty sources. And we, we looked at the skills, how they are affected, one remarkable uh, uh, result is that the effect of parameter uncertainty on the results. This is a contingency table, hits, miss, false alarm, and correct rejection. Hit means that there is low flow, uh, observed low flow, and your model is hitting. Your model can identify 
he can forecast. And uh, as you see, hit uh, more or less the same for deterministic models, so uh, first bars. But when you introduce uncertainties, models behave differently. And for seasonal forecast, we, we added two data driver models. And we saw the ranges for seasonal forecast as well. And for the last uh, uh, chapter, we looked at seasonality and climate impact on seasonality. What is seasonality? For example, the low flow occurrence on uh, late summer uh, is a seasonality. The occurrence day, seasonality ratio, and persistence. Uh, persistence is uh, if low flows insist on happening always to August 10, then it is very persistent. So we looked at the difference and we see the mean occurrence day, how it is shifted in Alpine region. So we expect an early uh, snow melt and uh, the climate impact will be inevitable. We see blue, which is winter low flow period. They occur uh, January and uh, we can identify here uh, when uh, the low flow period starts. And we see different GCMs and climate scenarios show totally different results and we should be careful which climate model we use. And we also uh, identify the shift in the ranges. As you see, the bars are shifting, especially remarkable is the uh, seasonality ratio. So uh, regime will change in the low flows. While it was uh, melting uh, April, May, it will be earlier melting. The conclusions are mainly our two models are doing well with forecasts but they are sensitive to different sources of uncertainties. 90% of confidence interval is capturing the observed low flows. And the seasonal ensemble forecasting, the main uncertainty comes from the input. But for uh, short term, the main uncertainty comes from parameter. This was new to the literature. Uh, because usually the main uh, problem uh, or error news part, we, we were thinking input. But when it is a dry period, you actually don't need an uh, input of precipitation because it's dry and low flow. So the effect of uh, input uncertainty becomes less. But the effect of parameter uncertainty becomes remarkable. And uh, uh, the mean occurrence is, is changing significantly. I see now my Dutch uh, teacher over there and uh, for her and for this, uh, my gratefulness to this land, I will very briefly say some words in Dutch as well to, <laughs> to, to show my uh, gratitude. Mahut, laugh water in the Rhine, buoyant, who cares, for we is an interessant uh, natuurlijk ik en energy productie. Uh, het is meestal blank, uh, belangrijk vanuit economische uh, perspectief. Ik heb geprobeerd om de huidige voorspelling te verbeteren. Mijn voorspellingen zijn niet alleen drie of vier dagen, maar ook tien, of, uh, uh, tien dagen of drie maanden. Op lagere termijn sowieso uh, is er grote onzekerheid. In het laatste stuk heb ik gekeken uh, naar de invloed van klimaatveranderingen op de la uh, laagwater in de Rijn. Dat was het. Dank u wel. <laughs>